Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Sean. And before we jump in this episode, I just wanted to give you a quick note. Something that if you could do for us would be amazing. It is the 2022 Podcast Awards going on right now. It's our seventh year trying to get into the slate. If you don't know, there's a nomination period all through July, July 1st through the end of the month. Go to podcastawards.com, pick out Language of Bromance for the Best Host Award. Like I said, it's our seventh year. We're trying to make the slate. If we make the slate, that means we get voted on. Actually, not really voted on, but we get uh, actual people listening to the show, telling us if it's good or bad, and then we could win Best Male Host. So please go to podcastawards.com and nominate Language of Bromance for the Best Male Host. All right, now for the show. See, I've, I've like been super tired the last like three days, and I don't know if it's just because I'm coming down with something. If that's what, like, you know, when you're younger, like, if you get a little sick, it's like, oh, you got a little sniffles, you're fine. I just don't know if I'm getting to a point in age where, like, the stuff just hits me even harder. I don't know. I don't really get sick. I used to not get sick. Well, I guess I don't really get sick much anymore either. I'm trying to think. Last time I got, like, sick sick was when I had COVID, and that was in 20. Have I really not gotten sick in two years? No, I don't think I have. We're a mortal, Richard. Oh, my heart! Quick, knock on something. Quick. Do it. Knock you are wood. so jinxing yourself. Oof. Notice how I stayed quiet that whole time. You know why? Tempting fate. Yeah. I shall not tempt fate. Yeah. I refuse. Yeah. Just try to get caught up on stuff. Like 4th of July weekend, I was at the lake. It's like, man, I'm going to watch my strange and th- Stranger Things and Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Nothing. I still got one episode of Obi-Wan Nothing. left. Yeah. You still got the last episode? Yeah. Still got the last episode. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Yep. I've got all the Stranger Things I got to watch still. And you have to watch uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yes. You said that one, too. That's on my list. It's so good. Hands down, best movie of 2022. I did talk my in-law. Easily. My, mo- mother- my mother-in-law into watching Our Flag Means Death. I think she's going to check that out. Did you finish that? No, we just watched the pilot. and We haven't got back to it yet. Oh. Yeah, need to find some time to sit with the wife to watch it because she liked it. Damn, that Taika. Yeah, he's good. He's. I haven't seen Thor yet. Thor just came out. No, I haven't seen that either. I'm not sure when I'll go see it. Maybe this week, but I don't know. Obi-Wan ended well. Everything everywhere, everything everywhere all at once. The movie made me laugh and cry. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not scared to admit, Sean. That movie made me cry. I cried. I understand. I got back into my country phase. Like this weather. Like in my truck, windows down. I throw on some country music. So, my like it just came out of nowhere, Sean. It just came out of nowhere. Like I'm just sitting there, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, what's that over there?" And then I look, and then they just fucking falcon punched me right in the feels. And I literally, like, I started crying, and I, like, literally, like, was angry. I was mad <laughs> because there was no preparation. There was none. Yeah. I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, you like <laughs> the ones where it's coming because you got to fight it back. But when it's just, like, poof. Like, it's the ones where you're like, don't do it. If you do it, I'm going to cry. Don't do it. But then when they come around, like, with a right? side swipe where it's like, what's that? Oh, no, there's the tears. If it, yeah, see when those happen, it feels like cathartic. You know, it feels like you know you're going on this emotional cl- getting to this emotional climax, and then and then the moment comes, and then you know you and then you get through it. But like this, you're just watching, and then all of a sudden it's like ha, ha. cry you and you're silly like, what bastard! The fuck? I wasn't prepared. It literally just knocked the wind out of me. Yeah. It's well, so good. It's such a good movie. I mean, speaking of not being prepared. It's big and it's small. Yeah. I'll have to watch it. It's I heard somebody talking about it. It seemed pretty cool. But speaking of not being prepared, uh, I've got a story about a guy who had an event with S's on it that was the likelihood is 893.35 quadrillion to one the odds that this thing that uh, happened would happen yeah these things that happen essentially like i pretty sure this is probably the only person that this has ever happened to in the world wow okay okay 
Okay, then we got. Then we should. Then you should tell me about it. You should tell me all about it in front of people on the internet. Let's do Ready? it. Ready? Okay. <gasps> <coughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we're speaking the language of romance. Sean, you have a story for me, and you're going to tell me all about it. And I'm, and I'm excited because you said you, 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 were, you were telling me with certainty that this is the only time it has or ever will happen to a person. Yeah. By the statistics, this gentleman, the events that happened to him... The likelihood of it is 893.35 quadrillion to one. Now, I don't know how many people there have ever been on the planet Earth, but I feel like we've probably haven't touched a quadrillion. I think you I think you're right. I'm going to say I'm going to say yes. You're so right. the likelihood of this happening is it feels mathematically impossible, but this guy had to go through it. So. We'll start out, this is uh, from National Geographic, and all of these things that oh, happen. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it's legit. Like, this isn't, like, National Enquirer, like... Um, I'll have to say thank you, National Geographic, for uh, letting me use one of my three free articles for this one. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> but last week... Mick Williams of Grand Junction in Western Colorado was bodyboarding. Wait a minute. His name is Mick Williams? That's his last name, yeah. Dylan Mick Williams. Uh, I thought you were going to say his his name was like Mick, and then his last name was Williams. No, that'd be a weird name. Old Mick. They still call him Old Mick. Mick Williams is kind of a weird name. Dylan Mick Williams is, that's got a good ring to it, though. I, how, I like Dylan McWilliams. Yeah, like how, Dylan McWilliams. That sounds like a porn. That's a porn star name. That's what that. You know. I was gonna say that or a wrestler, like Dylan McWilliams dropping the Mick bomb. Ass Crunchers Nine, starring Dylan McWilliams. Oh yeah. Speaking of that, I guess they just re-released Deep Throat. That's like the fiftieth anniversary of that movie. Why re-release it? Uh, well, it's weird. I, I don't have the article in front of like, me. Like, is there new... Did they add scenes? No, apparently the, the original director's kids. Like, now she's 55. <laughs> well, no, she died when she was, like, in 2008 from a car accident. But... Appa- oh, God, now it's, we- now it's really weird. I know, because then it's her corpse, and I don't think that's legal. Right? <laughs> you thought Deep Throat was controversial. Deep carcass. <laughs> deep corpse. <laughs> but apparently the the director's kids uh were like oh we're releasing this in the way that dad wanted which is kind of like a whole bag of weird but i guess like over years so it's fucking it's deep throat the snyder cut apparently yeah so they've got like uh um the scenes that like i guess some scenes were added some music was changed so they, like this is like how his vision was for deep throat now we put it to modern music let me see that thong. Yeah. Sean, that was like 20 years ago. I know, right? <laughs> it's modern to me. It's all puts all Post Malone. I don't even know. I bet Post Malone would make some dope porn music. Yeah, I don't even know if I can name, like, I couldn't sing you a Post Malone song to save my life. Like, if you sang it, I'd probably be like, oh, okay, I've heard that song. But, like, if you're like, sing a Post Malone song. I do like a rock star. Oh, okay, yeah, I've heard that one, but that's all I know. And I think I only know that from video games. I like Post Malone. I've heard, uh, like, he's, like... Mu- he's got some good stuff. Musically, he's, like, really, really good, but, like, he's just, like, dumb as a box of rocks. He's uh, he's big into video games. He owns... He paid... Oh, God, I don't remember how much. He paid a fuck ton of money for a Alpha Black Lotus... From Magic the Gathering, like oh. the origin, like an original printing of the Black Lotus card from from Magic the Gathering. And when I was in junior high, that card was like two hundred. No, no, that card, yeah, that card was like 
$250, So I can only imagine what the fuck that card is worth now. Apparently there's a big uh, like Chinese knockoff market for a lot of those magic cards like that. Like maybe not the Black Lotus they'll push. Cause I th- oh, I can see it. Because I think that's like a $200,000 card. But probably the ones that wow. like are 100 200 bucks. Like, and that's I mean, it's funny because it's just like, I don't know. There's some movie that talked about like some kind of um, like – counterfeit art dealership like where somebody's like oh i've got this you know mozart or not mozart uh michelangelo uh-huh. painting it's like well it's not real but they don't know it so but to them it is right i always think about that with like that stuff it's like oh i've got this black lotus card it's like well i mean it's not really but does anybody know or care no but you feel like you do so good for you well i don't think he i don't think he bought it i mean i i i, I get the impression that he bought it more for like emotional sentimental value rather than it's just ended up it costs a lot of money yeah well i mean it's just like uh uh what's his face in the superman comics and all that stuff um nicholas cage like he bought like one of the first right for superman comics he's he paid he paid a million bucks for uh for a superman comic i think he sold it though yeah he's kind of he was in some tax trouble for a bit yeah i think he sold it but no, he he paid a million bucks. It was it was first appearance of Superman. The high, it was the highest graded first appearance of Superman on the market. He paid a million bucks for it. See, that's what you need to do with time travel. You go back in time with like a bag of nickels and just buy a bunch of those comics and come back in the future like six million dollars. I mean, yeah. The thing is, is like I don't know. Do you think it? Do you think that that would work? Cause I feel like I would get to, I would get to hear and they'd be like, this is a forgery. And I'd be like, no, it, it's really from back then. But like, well, it can't look this, it can't look like this. I think you'd have to like and, figure out a way to like bury it somewhere. So it would age, but not right? age too much. <laughs> yeah. I thought about that too. Like you come back in time, like this is a 10 out of 10. There's like, there's no way. Yeah. Rip. Oh, that cost me a nickel. <laughs> Well, guess I got to go back in time. This is this is a forgery. You know what I do with forgeries? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a black hole that appears above, like, New York City. Like, this is all <laughs> your fault, you son of a bitch. I just want Superman comics. Yeah, you tell your wife, like, I got to go back in time. It's like, shouldn't you go back in time for good? Like, you know, stop some, like, horrific event in time. Like, we just watched Quantum Leap. Like, he leaps trying to make things better that went wrong. Why don't you do I'll that? Kill Hitler and then I'll buy super I'll buy Superman comics. Yeah. But then you do that and the superhero comics don't take off. Then they're not worth anything. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Captain America is like Yeah, then the whole market changes. Yeah. What would be the, like the best comics at that point too? Cuz like that's yeah, World War 2 like you had Captain America punching Hitler. That wouldn't happen. Yeah. Hmm. Those are always like We've talked about this before, but like the what if machine, like I would love to have that and play with it all day. Be like, what if I did this and this happened? Oh, world ends. What if I did this and this happened? Oh, world like ends. That, uh, yeah. Like, like those episodes of Futurama that they would do. There was a bunch of those where like, they just basically like scream a question into a machine and then it would play out a, a scenario. Yeah. There's a book I ran yeah. across, uh, I haven't looked to see what it is or anything. It was at Barnes and Nobles, but it was like, what if the allies had failed? And it was like 60 different scenarios that would have caused like the allies to fail, uh, in world war two. Um, Mm -hmm. so those things are always kind of interesting. Like how far, like how much would change compared to what we have today versus like how drastically different it could be. All hypothetical, obviously, but anyway, obviously, uh, Dylan McWilliams, who hopefully has a new career in porn in adult films. Yep. And is not a Nazi. Not a Nazi that we're aware of. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Article six. He's a Nazi. Damn it. <laughs> so he was body boarding off the island of Koi, Hawaii, when he felt something hit his leg, Richard. It was a submarine. A submarine. It was a submarine from the 40s, and they were Nazis. Yep. Pearl Harbor part D. Uh, no, Richard, what he saw underneath him was a shark. And I start, and this is his quote. So I saw the shark underneath me 
I started kicking at it. I know it hit, I hit it at least once and swam to shore as quickly as I could. McW- Why did he kick it? Uh, well, you know what you're supposed to do if a shark attacks you, right, Richard? Put your finger in its butthole. Yeah, you lick your thumb, and you find its butthole, and you stick your thumb in it, and it goes, oh, and swims away. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> That's for outsource only. <laughs> so the wound required seven stitches, and the teeth mark suggested it was a tiger shark, Richard. Wait a minute. The wound, so it bit him? It bit him. Yeah, so... I thought you said it just brushed up against it. Well, that's what he that's felt. That's why I was asking, why did he kick it? Because, like, if like, if, it, if like, you're a shark and you're just, like, swimming along and then you accidentally bump into somebody, you're like, oh, excuse me, and then it starts, like, kicking you, I'd be like, ah, fuck this! That's a good point. It Probably what happened is he kicked it right in the mouth and cut his foot on the mouth. <laughs> the shark wasn't even, like, it, like you said, it bumped into him. He's like, oh, excuse Oh, I'm sorry. Ow! What? Ow! Ow! Oh, you got blood in my mouth. Oh! I gotta wash my mouth out with salt water. Here, and he pushed him to shore. He's like, "Here, let me help you to shore, sir." (laughs) Watch out for those dolphins; they'll rape you. Bye. No, so sharks do occasional shark attacks. Occasionally, do happen in Hawaii, especially by tiger sharks. Tiger sharks are like some of the more aggressive. Um. I think it might have been in Florida. I'm not sure what state it was, but there was a teenage girl who recently had her leg bitten off. How often, Sean, do you read about shark attacks in order to confirm your fear of sharks? Daily. I have a Google feed that tells me anytime there's a shark attack or potential shark attack. You are constantly validating yourself by going, look, see, look at this. Look at this here. Like, Sean, it's only happened 20 times in a year. Well, you know what? 20 times too many is what I say. That's like me. That's like me. Like Googling for footage of plane crashes and be like, I'm never getting on a plane. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're more likely to die. This is what you're doing to yourself. I think you're more likely to die in a plane crash than you are a shark attack. Probably. Um, I know you're more likely to be killed by a cow. We talked about that years ago. Oh, yeah. It's just the concept of like uh, anything in life, like being attacked and eaten or a part of your body being eaten, like just gives me shivers. Like I, like I said, I tried to watch the Jaws ride, <clears throat> like the last Jaws ride at Universal. And I was like, I could do this. Yeah. And after like two or three instances of the shark jumping out of the water, I was like, nope, I'd be screaming my head off. I wouldn't sleep that night. <laughs> like, fuck this. <laughs> so shark attacks do occasionally happen in Hawaii, especially by tiger sharks, said George Burgess, director of the Florida Program for Shark Research at the University of Florida. However, the odds of being attacked by a shark in U.S. waters is 1 in 11.5 million, he said. For wow. yeah, for perspective, the average American has about a one in five thousand chance of being struck by lightning during their lifetime. During the course of their entire, that seems low. It's a lot lower than what I'd expect. I mean, you so like right? You think? I mean, granted, we're talking about the course of your entire life, but still, like one. See, now I'm afraid I'm gonna get struck by lightning. Yeah, so like, there's thirty thousand people in the town you live in. There's six people that've been struck by lightning, but based off these odds, yeah. But and I, I'm not. I don't like that. And I'm not sure, like the like what that means, because I think a lot. I don't know what the the likelihood of surviving a lightning strike is. Like it's probably higher than what you expect. I'm sure it's higher what you, than you, what you expect. But like, huh? Can you imagine Mm-mm. being struck by lightning? Oh, like it hits you. Yeah. So funny story. And I wonder too, like if they consider water. So uh, over the Fourth of July weekend, we're at the lake. And I told my mom and dad the story about, like, a storm was rolling in. And you got struck by lightning. Almost. My mom was scared. I'll just say that. But across the water, this was, like, five years ago, like, the storm was coming in. So, like, the family, like, pulled in their lily pad and were, like, getting inside. And it wasn't, like, like right away, but, like, 15 minutes after, like, they'd finished packing up and were gone, lightning struck, like, exactly where their lily pad was. Wow. So and like you think like oh my gosh like it wasn't like the minute after but still 15 minutes is, feels like cutting it close. So we were in the water swimming and it started thundering a little bit 
And my mom saw lightning like way across the way, and she like freaked out. She's like, "Get out of the water! So lightning! I'm not <laughs> shitting you guys! Get the whoop! Get out!" She pulled. She pulled a. She pulled a. She pulled a sheriff. Yeah. Get out now! And my dad and I were like, "Okay, calm down. We'll, we'll get this lily pad." Richard Lightning struck, and we didn't make it. I'm a ghost right now. My mom's right. <laughs> no, no, I thought the chance of survival was probably better than than you think. I think so. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Oh God, I could, uh, can you imagine? Like it probably just like if I was to guess, I'm gonna guess that it just basically like overloads your nervous system. Yeah, water would probably be the like dangerous because you like blows out your ner- it like blows out your nervous system like a circuit breaker. Yeah, and in terms of like if you're in the water, that's probably the more dangerous because you might go unconscious for a few minutes. And if you're in the water, you're, you're probably more you're basically drown. But it's the lightning that caused that. I would th- I I think I I I'm gonna guess that if you're struck by lightning, either two things are gonna happen: either a you orgasm, you're just dead. You're just dead on the spot. Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, my God, maybe. That would be the coolest thing ever. Like, you're like, oh, God, this is the greatest <laughs> feeling ever I can do. Oh. But, like. Why is his pants all wet? Why is it either sticky? A, you're just dead, or B, um, you're pretty much okay. Like, I feel like if you, if you, if you can, if, you're, if, if your heart doesn't immediately stop, then you'll be all right. Yeah, it probably matters like age and stuff like that too, obviously. Like the older you are, maybe it's a little bit more dangerous or well, we younger. Had, didn't we do that story about the guy that got struck by lightning like six times? Uh, wasn't it like, I think it was more like a dozen or so. It was a lot. Like it was enough, like if it ever started raining, he like cowered in fear. You're like, that's silly guy. It's like, no, he's been struck by lightning like a dozen times. Like, oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> Why do you always go out in the rain? <laughs> Well, he actually got struck by lightning on a very clear day. It's like, who the fuck did he anger? <laughs> uh, let's see. So while shark attacks get all the media attention, you're more likely to be attacked by a bear, Richard. So Dylan McWilliams gets attacked by a shark. You're like, huh, you're more likely to get attacked by a bear. Richard McWilliams, who has been backpacking across the U.S. and Canada for a few years, also managed to beat a 1 in 2.1 million odds. Of being injured by a bear. This guy who was attacked by a shark in 2018 was also attacked by a bear. Oh, oh I, I guess, I guess we, I guess I skipped over the part. Like, so, so the shark bit him and he was, and he was okay. Just like what, like took a chunk out of his leg and he was fine. Uh, it was only seven stitches. So I think it was more like either a test bite or like I said, he accidentally kicked it in the mouth. Uh, okay. Cause okay. I don't know if you know this Richard, or it might've been a pretty small shark, but like if a big shark's like, I want that leg, it gets that leg. Yeah. Shark gets what shark wants. Yeah, but in July of 2017, about a year before the shark attack, Richard, I'm going to a news story from Fox 31, Colorado's very own news station. Uh, A teenager camping at Glacier View Ranch in Boulder County was attacked by a black bear around 4 a.m. Sunday officials with Colorado Parks and Wildlife said... That means it probably woke him up. Yeah. Dude, there's like like my dad took four a.m. Yeah, like well, you want to get w- woken up to a bear just like punching you right in the mush. I mean, it could have been like me that one time when I got super intoxicated and passed out by a tree in bear country. Like I'm laying there and I have a vision of like, oh yeah, they said there's bears in the area. <laughs> oh, this- yeah, but you didn't wake up to a bear like punching you in the face. I could have though. That would have been horrible. Uh, when I went uh, hunting in Colorado with my dad, like all the guys that were there, because we were in like a big tent, they were telling stories about bears coming in tents and picking out people to eat. They're like, nighty night. <laughs> <laughs> then they got mad because I'd pee right outside the tent. And they're like, why are you peeing right there? It's because I won't get eaten by a bear. Yeah. Tell the scary stories. Away. You tell scary stories, stuff's going to happen. Like, why are you pooping in the tent? I'm not walking all the way to the outhouse in the dark. Screw that. Sean, we're on a hill. Just what? Do you have to do it at the 
upside of the hill. <laughs> so this ranch is near a town. Oh, shit runs downhill. <laughs> like, there's a saying about it. So the ranch is near the town of Ward, northwest of Boulder. So the victim is 19-year-old staff member at the ranch who only wanted to be identified as Dylan. So back in this article, he's like, no, don't call me McWilliams because I got – I've got ambitions to be in the adult film. He business. hasn't established his porn name yeah. yet. He forgot what street he grew up on. <laughs> so Dylan, who was not in a tent, said he woke up when the bear wrapped its paws around him and bit his head. He said the bear was Holy trying. Holy shit! It bit his yeah, head. Yeah, the bear was trying to pull him away. That's I don't. You've never heard that. That's what bears do. They basically bite your head and pop it like a melon. Man. Yeah. I think that's the problem because, like, the human skull is pretty tough. So, like, I don't know if it's, like, you can't, like, really crush it. So it's more like they'll just pop their jaws inside and their teeth inside. And then, like, it's enough that you're Uh kind of, like, immobilized, but you're still alive and suffering. Yeah. Bears are, like, sharks, like, again, like, you think bad things about sharks, they bite your leg off. See, like, you look at, like, like lions and tigers. Like, they just go for your throat. They're like, I'm a, like... Slash, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this dude's throat, and then he's gonna be dead in like two minutes. And then it's good eating. Yeah. Right? I start with a butthole. Yeah. I don't know why. They're weird, but that's what they do. Well, because it's like, it's, you do the hardest part first, you know? So that way. Oh, the hardest part to get down. Like, it's like, oh, this is the shitty part. It's gross. But the rest of it. Yeah. So then, like, everything else after that is smooth sailing. Also, you wanna hurry up, you wanna do that first. Because, you know, when somebody dies, the first thing they do is they relieve all their bowels. That's true. So you hurry up and eat that first before it has a chance to come out. Yeah, good point. Yeah, because then you open it up more so then you can grab them and drag it. It just leaves a trail. You make sure you do it uphill, though, mm-hmm. because, as you know, Richard, shit runs downhill. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, uh. That's how that's how they clean it. That's how they that's how they clean it before ah, they yeah. eat it. But yeah, because they you know, like they can't field dress a human or or an animal because they don't have exactly. thumbs. Exactly. Smart. Exactly. And you know how you you know you you don't you don't clean f- when you go fishing, you don't clean the fish in your kitchen. You clean them out there so that way you bring so that way you bring nice fish into your kitchen. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, see we don't give that lines enough credit. Yeah. So you drag that you you just leave a a poo trail all the way to your den, and then by the time you get to your den, then the body has already you know taken care of itself. Nice, I like it. It's cleaned itself. So Dylan said about four this morning. I woke up to a crunching sound and me being drugged, and I thought it was a dream at first. Then I realized it wasn't, and how he realized that is because the excruciating pain. Of a bear chomping on your head. Yeah, he realized that crunching sound was the bear's teeth biting into his skull. So the bear grabbed my head with his paw and pulled it. Then it grabbed the back of my head, Dylan said. I did not know what was going on. Once I saw the bear, heard its breath, it was pretty scary. So so the, so the what a bear does is it bites your head and then drags you where? Just like outside? Yeah, probably somewhere like... uh not they don't have like dens and stuff like that, but they probably just drag it to a spot where they can kind of like rest and get like safe from other animals. So what you should do, what you're telling me is what you should do is you should sleep with your feet to the door, so that way they don't go for your head. Um, Richard, I don't know if you know this, but bears don't necessarily have to use doors. <laughs> they peek in like, oh shit, he's feet first. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm a fucking bear. Let me go to the other side. Rip. What mastermind could penetrate <laughs> this vault of security that I've created? Uh, have you done much camping? It's like when you it's like when you go to the beach and you put your put your wallet in, in your shoe. Oh, yeah. And you're like, nobody's going to look there. I'm a genius. No one ever thought to hide their money in their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> have you done much camping? Uh, a fair amount. I always find it like as humans, you're like, oh, I'm in a tent. I'm safe. It's like, no, you're not. I think Blair Witch kind of <laughs> ruined it for us for sure. But it's like, you're not safe. Like anything can crawl in there or tear it down. And then, honestly, like everything sees that's like, wait, I wasn't there last night. What the fuck's in there? Smell all that good food. Dump, 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 dump. Oh, look. 
I mean, I always, I, I guess I just, I guess my thought was always like, well, maybe the, the animal will like collapse the tent. And so then I'll be, I'll be covered in the tent and then it, it's not, and then it just won't want to go through all the work to try and like fish me out. There could be part of that, of this, of this like pile of plastic sticks and windbreaker material. Yeah. And most like animals like that, they, they try to go for the easiest prey. So if it starts like becoming a hassle, unless they're like super hungry or sick, they'll move on. Yeah. So Dylan uh, Richard, he said the hulking animal dragged Dylan about 10 feet out of his sleeping bag while he slept under the stars with a few other camp staffers. I grabbed a hold of the bear by his ear and found his eye and I was poking it. It just let go of me and I was able to get away. So he didn't do like what you're supposed to do, but apparently poking it in the eye. Well, he probably couldn't reach. That's true. That's probably what he tried first. That's why he got 10 feet away. That's why. Yeah. He was like trying to do the the old the old reach yeah. around. Well, and then and think about it too. It was biting his head, so he probably couldn't get the, his thumb in his mouth. So he was probably trying to get it in the bear's mouth. Oh to get yeah, it, good point. Get it wet, then do it. But he found the eye by accident, and the bear knew it was coming. It's probably not the first bear rodeo that he's had. He's like, oh, it yeah. poked me in the eye. I know he's where like, that thumb's going next. Yeah, I'll go for the wet willy. That's the next <laughs> best thing. <laughs> <laughs> Foiled again by the three stooges technique. <laughs> so the bear took off, but it had uh, injured him. Dylan was left with big gashes on his head that required nine staples. So the shark attack required seven stitches. This was nine staples. He was taken to the hospital and treated and was later released. So he said, uh, uh, here's the thing though, is like, uh, you said he woke up, to hear to the to a crunching sound, like I can't even like fathom what that would like feel and or sound like, yeah. like the sound in your head of the crunching of your own head. Mm. It's like who's eating Doritos this early in the morning? Uh, the a bear. Ooh. So a bear wandered into the main area of campus where several staff members were sleeping. Officials with Glacier View Ranch said in a statement. Unprovoked, the bear proceeded to attack one staff member. The on-campus medical team responded immediately and stabilized the staff member while the camp directors contacted emergency personnel. Uh, For a bear to walk up and bite a human and pull on them like that, that is a very dangerous bear that has gotten too comfortable with people, and that is a threat to humans. Um, so kind of like what we said, I'm guessing Dylan now wears the bear as a hat. Yeah, he went out. That's what he should have done. He should like, I'm going to go out and find that bear and I'm going to kill it myself with my bare hands, not bare hands, like without any weapons. I'm going to choke it to death. I'm going to take his bear yeah, hands and put them on my and hands. Then they're going to be. Yeah, then they're going to be my bare hands. Um, there's, I don't have the article pulled up, but they did go and find the bear and euthanize it, which typically is what happens. And then these. he punched the shark with his bare hands yeah. that he got from the bear. <laughs> so he was very lucky. He's a brave kid. He's a smart kid. He did everything right, Churchill said. Uh, and they go through like the stuff like, make sure you don't have food in the camp. We didn't, but still, except me. I must have smelled really good or something, Dylan said. It's because he had that porn stash cologne on. Yeah, that's true. You know what? You know what he should do now, like to complete the trifecta? He should stand out in the middle of like a field and hope that he gets like attacked by like an eagle. Like an eagle swoops down and tries to like oh, peck his eyes out. Richard, let's keep reading the original story. So, oh my God, really? Yeah. So, land, sea, and air. Two point five, one in two point five million for a bear attack. One in like eleven million for a shark attack. So uh, this is the the original National Geographic article. So a North American black bear that attacks a human is generally hungry, said outdoor writer Gordon Grice, author of The Book of Deadly Animals and Shark Attacks Inside the Mind of Ocean's Most Terrifying Predator. Such attacks are very rare and usually because a bear has learned to associate humans with food by eating from a bird feeder, trash can, or pet dishes, he said. Between 1900 and 2009, oh shit, I didn't realize it was this many, just 14 people have been killed by bears in the lower 48. You know why they- 14 people. Yeah, you know why they specifically say the lower 48? 
because in Alaska, but, well, there's a lot of grizzly bears. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say like because the, I would think there's I think the bears outnumber people in Alaska. Yeah. It's like sheep. It's like sheep in New Zealand, right? Pro, yeah. Like for every one person in New Zealand, there's like eight sheep. Yeah, and like grizzly bears, like they don't care. It's like I'm hungry. That thing's moving slow. I'm gonna eat it. So Richard, maybe not so surprisingly, given McWilliams luck, but he managed to stumble onto a rattlesnake while hiking in Utah in 2015. So we've got 18 is a shark, 17 is a bear. His first encounter in 2015 was with a rattlesnake. He said the bite had little venom in it and decided not to go to the hospital, even though he was sick for a couple days. The odds, so this is actually kind of nerve-wracking. So he said like 1 in 11 million for um, shark attack, 1 in 2.5 million for bear attack, Richard, the odds of being bitten by a venomous snake in the U.S. are estimated at 1 in 37,500. Really? Yeah, that's pretty low. That seems high. No, I would think it'd be more. Like, I would think it'd it'd be a lot more likely. I almost got bit by a venomous snake. Oh, when? Um... I was walking through the woods. It was honestly the only thing that saved me from not being bitten by it uh, is, well, two, two things. Because I was walking along, I was walking along the river and I came this close, like literally uh, like inches from stepping directly on a rattlesnake. Oh, geez. Was did it like fang at you or anything? And honestly, do what? Did it like fang or jump out you or anything? No, no. And the reason it didn't was because um, it was early in the morning, so it was cold. Ah, uh. so it was it was sleeping. So it was early in the morning. It was all co- it was coiled up. I didn't even see it. Was its eyes closed? I don't know. Did you I sing it a look. lullaby to make sure it went back to sleep? Like it backed away slowly. And good snake, keep a rattle next to you. Yeah, I look down. I look down, and I see the snake like co- coiled up in a in a like in a co- like coiled up on the ground. And I realized that I was like this close to just Oof. stepping on. And those can be like six feet long too. Like those could be big snakes. It was, I don't remember, I honestly don't remember how big it was, but yeah, if it, I think if the only, like I said, the only thing I feel like saved me was the fact that it was the morning and it was cold. And so it was asleep. Were you running uphill or downhill? Cause I'm kind of curious if like you end up running in your shit or not. Cause shit runs downhill. <laughs> so depending on where you're running, you might've been okay. I ran downhill to get away. Yeah. Did it startle you quite a bit? Like, are you like, do you have a pretty big sna- fear of snakes? No, I, I, no, I don't. Um, that one, that one, oof. Yeah, that kind of, that kind of freaked me out though. Yeah. The, so just, so at our new house, um, we have to read our own water meter, which I didn't know was a thing until I moved Uh here. And so like, it's all the way at the front of like, um, our drive. So it's like a quarter of a mile away from the house and you got to pick up this little like manhole that's like six inches wide. And when I picked it up yesterday, there was a little bitty snake hanging out on the water meter. Like it was probably like maybe oh, that's fine. maybe like eight inches. I was scared. Like I picked it up and I backed away and my son was there. He's like, Dad, it's just a little one. Quit being a pussy. <laughs> like, Touche. But it was just hanging out. So then I punched him and I threw him down the hole. Yeah. I was a <laughs> who's a pussy now? Indiana Jones it, you little bastard. Funk. Um well, it's funny, though, so they put the odds of being killed. So this is like being attacked in these three instances, not even being killed by these animals. But the odds of being killed in a car accident is a 1 in 112. That seems low. Yeah. I would think like 250. But I know uh, it was like, I think like teenagers, it was like the highest death was is car accidents. Well, that makes sense. Um. But uh, so continuing on about Dylan McWilliams. So he's one of the unluckiest guys on the planet, says Bergs. How unlucky? 
Since each event is independent, the odds of each are multiplied together, he said, making the odds of this happening 893.35 quadrillion to one. That's crazy. But I, I, I still, like, he still hasn't been attacked by a bird yet. He hasn't, yeah. So I guess he... Like he needs to be like walking in a field, and then an eagle just di- tries to dive bomb his head, like pokes out one of his eyes. And then he has to like fight the eagle off. Eagles are big too; and they got those big talons. Like it would tear you up. Yeah. So Mick Williams chalks, or all- even not even that, like a hawk. Ooh, Ooh yeah. No, thank you. Uh, my uh, well, let me finish this, and we could talk about like our uh, brushes with nature because I got a hawk story. So McWilliams just I have a hawk story. McWilliams just chalks all this up to being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He encourages everyone to experience the outdoors. He says, I still go hiking, I still catch rattlesnakes, and I still will swim in the ocean. But I don't fly. Yeah. Because that's crazy. <laughs> so uh my snake story, besides the one I just saw, I think I told this before, but uh I was staying at the lake by myself. And it was like nighttime and I forgot to flip one of the lights on down on the patio. So it was like, you know, nine o'clock at night. It was dark outside. I'm wandering down and I go about ready to go down the second step, second set of stairs. And I'm pretty sure it was a copperhead. There was a copperhead snake that was like right at the edge of the steps. And like Uh I got like two steps away from it, saw it. And I was like, nope, backed away, went back up to the house. Yeah, because they're yep. they're not super aggressive, but like I didn't want to be bit by a copperhead all by myself down at the lake. Like that's true. Didn't seem like a good time. I'm surprised it was like out and about in the middle of the night. Yeah. So uh, like a year or two before that, there was another one that our dog almost stepped on um, almost in the same spot. But the only thing I can think of is that light was on. So it was attracting bugs, which attracted frogs. Which then attracted the snake. Oh, because there, yeah, well, maybe because there usually are a lot of lizards down there too, like a uh, lot lizards. Um, I don't know why they're there. There's no truck stops, but they always show up. I was gonna say <laughs> that's like there's where are the trucks? Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe they're just vacationing down there. Um, no, uh, like regular like salamanders. One time I went to go flip the light off, and then there was, and then this forty year old woman stepped out, and she's like, "Hey, baby, you looking for a good time?" Like, no, and I backed away and went back <laughs> in the house. I locked all the doors and hid under the cover. She stood at the door for 75 minutes. <laughs> Listen, I'll cut my prices in half. Uh, no, just like regular lizards. Um, and the, the year that I saw that snake, I remember very vividly the, the day before, like thinking like, you know, I haven't seen very many lizards today. Little snake found its honey pot. The snake ate him. Yeah. So uh, we talked about birds. What's your uh, falcon story? Uh, so I feel I, honestly, it doesn't really feel like my story. It feels more like my wife's story. But I was at work and I get this phone call from my wife that tells me there is a hawk in the house. <laughs> at first, you're like, is that code? Like, do I need to come over with my pants off? You mean the Eagles landed? No, there's a hawk <laughs> in the house. <laughs> so apparently what had happened is I'm guessing either a mouse ran by the one of the windows in the kitchen, but this hawk had like dove and smashed through two panes of glass and landed underneath the kitchen table. Oh. So not only is there glass all over the place, but there's a bird who's cut and pissed off. Right. And so initially, like it was laying there on the ground. And so she thought the bird was dead. And so she, um, she got up and she looks and all of a sudden the bird like, like flips itself right side up on its feet <laughs> and then does that. And then does that, you know, that like, bird neck turn where they're like and like with yeah like a dog that just farted and isn't sure where it came from yeah and then she's like oh shit and so she had two of the the kids were in the living room so she hurried up grabbed both of the kids ran into the bedroom and shut the door (laughs) so now my kids have a deathly a fear of all things in the air (laughs) and so 
and then calls me and I didn't know what to do. And so her brother was like on his way over. And so he got there and, and so what they ended up doing was basically, um, he stood outside. He came in through the front door (laughs) with, with, he came in through the front door with a big blanket and this, and the bird tried to like go for him. And as soon as he did, he like threw the blanket on top of it and then kicked the blanket outside. Oh, okay. Smart move. But he said that this bird like is like, it like put both of its wings out and like, and I had in this place, I had one of those kind of archway doorways from the kitchen to the living room. He said the ends of the ends of its wings could, was easily touching yeah. both sides of this door well, I think of this archway. Like, Eagle's wingspans, I think, are like 15 or 20 feet. It's crazy. Yeah. And so he threw this blanket over it and then threw the blanket outside. It basically clawed its way out of the blanket and then flew off. Uh, like, it's always like if you get an animal, like in our old, old house, we had like a little baby snake that somehow snuck in. And like that, like even mice, like when you hear about mice being in your house, I'm like, what the fuck are they doing in my house? Like, it feels almost like you're being yeah. attacked. Like. Like, no, this is my place. Go back out in the nature. But can you imagine, like, the speed this thing was flying at to smash through, like, two panes of glass? Well, can't they fly, like, 40, 50 miles an hour? And be fine? Well, I mean, Something like I don't that, know if he yeah. was fine. He probably had a concussion. <laughs> what is a concussion for birds? Is it different? I don't know. CTE might be a little bit different. <laughs> um, it's, so, it's, uh, it's flying all wonky. <laughs> So my falcon story, uh, same lake house. My my father in law went down there, um, like a week or two beforehand, and he was telling me a story about like he went up to they've got like a little like up the hill a little ways, and they can put trash, and they got other stuff up there that they clean up. I guess he was up there, and like he saw this uh, falcon poke its head out of a nest on the ground, which he thought was weird because most of them like uh-huh. their nests are high up, and so he's like, well, that's weird. And right when he turned around, he gets hit in the shoulder, not from the bird in the nest, from the dad bird hanging out watching the mama bird. And my father-in-law is not the fastest man in the world. And I don't remember if he fell down or not, but like he had like, you know, like trying to get away from this bird, just attacking him. Yeah. So cut to about two weeks later, him and I, uh, you know, we're going to, we're staying at the cabin and, um, I don't remember why I parked up at the top, but, or we're, I yeah, parked up at the top cause we're going to go do something and we're walking and we pick the thing up and, you know, we turn around, start heading back to the truck and he's like, oh yeah, this bird, this is right about where I was got attacked oh, again no. <laughs> right in the shoulder. Oh no! And I saw it all in slow motion because he's like, you know, he's like, you know, it's like, this is right about where <laughs> you are. And out of the corner of my eye, just this dart of a bird flying like, you know, those jet fighters pops him right in the shoulder. And he's like, God damn it. And <laughs> starts running. <laughs> and we both run and to the. fell back into a rattlesnake yeah. nest. And then he climbed out of that and a bear bit his head. And then he rolled down the hill. Him to the lake it, where yep. he was bit by a shark. You, Lake shark. You say quadrillion. That's what that's the odds of that would be. But no, like it, uh, it like ended up landed on my truck on the bed. And we're both kind of like, look- like mother nature's in coats. <laughs> we're both looking at it and we're like, man, bird, like we don't want to mess with you, but we got to get in this truck. And so hurried up, got in, shut the doors. It flew off. Never saw that bird again. I actually parked up there for th- because you know why? That's because he went out and shot it later. Like I like I I was wondering where all those shell casings came from. And he has a really cool like feathered cap now. And they drug it and they and he held the he held the the still beating heart of that of that bird in front of the bird children. Yeah. I wonder if he killed the mom first or the dad bird first. Probably the mom bird. Made the dad bird watch. Yeah. Yeah. Then killed the dad in front of the babies. And they're like, we're gonna when we grow big, we're gonna he just throw them in the water. <laughs> Nature's a cruel that beast. Dark. <laughs> and so's your father in law, apparently. Yeah, don't cross him. <laughs> That's what he said. For, that's uh, what he said the first time I saw him. He's like, I've killed so many animals. You treat my daughter right. <laughs> yes, sir. But yeah. 
You're going to get the bird treatment. What's the bird <laughs> treatment? <laughs> so Dylan McWilliams, Richard, he uh, was attacked by a shark, attacked by a bear, bitten by a rattlesnake. That's a lot. That is a lot. I feel like, what do you think Mother Nature's trying to tell him? Uh, well, he says he still catches rattlesnakes, so I think he would stop doing that for one. Right? You would think that like you just would stay away from the outdoors. Yeah. Well, and like he's like, take the hint, bro. Yeah. And like, if you, if I'm being honest, like if, if I go camping somewhere, like let's say I go on a float trip and I get bit by a copperhead on the float trip, I'm probably never going on a float trip ever again. Like, why would right? you want to? Cause that thought's always going to be in your yeah. head. If I go camping, get attacked by a bear, never going camping again. Like at this point, I, f- I feel like, I feel like if anything happens, it's kind of on you. Yeah. A little bit. Like, Heed the warning for fuck's sake. Agreed. But yeah, I mean, we've had our own brushes with nature. Um, He's had a couple more close calls than we have, but I guess as we're finishing up this, I mean, close calls, I wasn't really like close call from death. Sure. Yeah. Well, ours were close calls. His were like front door visits. Yes. Like knock, knock. Who's there? Shark bite. Knock, knock. Who's there? Bear attack. Well, what's funny is two of the three were actually trying to eat him. Like, the other one was just defending itself. Like, that snake's not going to eat him. But the shark is like, I'm hungry. Bear's like, I'm hungry. You don't know what's in that snake's mind. It's true. Maybe he's like, I could do, I could do it. I could do it. I can unhinge my jaw. I've watched Deep Throat, the director's cut. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dave. Dave, watch this. I'm going to do it. No, you're not. It's, it's literally 30 times your size. No, I could do it. I could do it. Yeah. You never believe in me. You ever see those videos of snakes that eat something that's a little bit too big for it? And they choke on it? Yes. It's creepy as hell. Snakes are weird. I don't like them. Yes, it is. But eh. watching watching a snake eat, like, in general is just not something you, like, you watch it once and then you go, why did I watch this? You know what's worse is if you catch snakes mating. Like, it is the roughest creepiest like thing and like i'm pretty sure when you see that you're looking into the pit of hell it is unsettling <laughs> there's nothing beautiful about that at all <laughs> but as we're uh as we're getting ready to tidy up richard do you have any richard's closing thoughts on our dylan mcwilliams nature episode uh if your name is dylan mcwilliams stay the fuck inside I think I think that's a that's probably a good place to start off. Um, what else? Uh, maybe listen to listen and try to understand the messages that you are getting from the universe. And apparently, the universe is telling Dylan McDermott to stay inside. And maybe change his name or use his real name. What if this is like, what if Dylan's like a really bad litterer and this is nature's way of being like, Hey dude, pick up your trash. Oh yeah. Good point. Yeah. Good point. We don't know his life. Yeah. That's a good point. He's like, you know what I do with oil in my car? I just spill it all over the place. Only downhill though. Not uphill. Yep. Now we're going to hear a story about him being kicked in the balls by Captain Planet. Yeah. Well, he's our hero. Taking pollution down to zero. All right. Well, let me do a little bit of housekeeping. Visit our website. We're at LanguageBros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LanguageBro. Emos at bros at LanguageBros.com. And if you want to join us, our Patreon, the Patreon that supports Mother Nature and listens to Mother Nature, just like our two patrons, Wendy and Aaron. You two are, are, we hope that you are never attacked by anything, but if you are, take the hint and don't go outside. Yeah, and if it's unprovoked, Richard and I will form a search party and take down whatever animal it is with you. So really, this is a PSA for you. This is a PSA for both of you. Yeah, be careful. All right, well, is there anything else before I close her out? No, I'm good, sir. All right. Well, that's all the bros we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. 
Remember, don't be a why. Be a why. Be a why not? Not unless you're attacked by a bear, in which case you know the answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure you'd be yelling the whole time. Why? Why? <laughs> And then the bear's like, why not? Chomp, 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 chomp. <laughs> I was hungry, that's why. Nom, 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 nom. 